everyone how's it going today we'll be talking about fashion aesthetics a word that's been so overused and all of us have a certain aesthetic yet most of the times we don't really know what is ours but once you know what style or aesthetic you are most inclined towards it will make the process of shopping and styling yourself so much more easier your aesthetic reflects your personal style your taste your preferences and knowing it allows you to express yourself authentically through your choices in say fashion in art in home decor and in other areas of your life a lot of the times people ask okay but what if i wear indian wear or what if i wear western wear how do we still like have the same aesthetic your clothing can be influenced by a certain aesthetic in ways like colors or patterns silhouettes and shapes and fabrics and textures and even accessories so let's dive deep and see what all kinds of aesthetics we have and how you can choose yours first and foremost we have the classic aesthetic the classic aesthetic is timeless it's elegant and it's sophisticated it is characterized by tailored and very well fitted clothing especially in neutral colors and minimal patterns classic fashion emphasizes really high quality materials that are timeless they're durable and they're elegant so wool silk cotton leather cashmere some of these fabrics and materials are commonly associated with the classic fashion aesthetic As an example you can think of Deepika Padukone she is known for her love for tailored clothing and she often wears very well fitted pants suits and pencil skirts with a classic white blouse this one time she wore a very classic black saree with a golden blouse and it's something that's very classic it's very sophisticated and it screams timelessness a word that has been floating around very commonly is the academia aesthetic academia fashion is inspired by the traditional style of scholars and intellectuals with an emphasis on tailored structured pieces and accessories common pieces in the academia aesthetic include blazers tweed jackets collared shirts cardigans loafers oxford shoes and bookish accessories like you know glasses or scarves a little out of context but something that would make this clearer is that sometimes we associate cities with a certain aesthetic as well for me when i went to oxford and cambridge both had a very classic academia vibe and naturally so you could see it in their architecture in the lifestyle of the residents and of course in their clothing now dark academia is a subculture of the academia fashion aesthetic that emerged online in the early 2010s it is usually characterized by an appreciation for classic literature arts and history with a focus on dark and moody themes The color palette is often muted and includes dark shades of black, grey, navy and burgundy. A lot of people confuse this with gothic. So gothic and dark academy aesthetics they both do share some similarities in their love for darker themes, but they also have notable differences. Like gothic fashion often features dark, flowing and romantic clothing such as you know, long black dresses and corsets and lace. Dark academy fashion on the other hand, it often includes tweed blazers, button-up shirts, loafers and other clothing inspired by traditional academic attire. Next we have bohemian. If you resonate with this, you value creativity, individuality and freedom. You do prefer unconventional styles and bold colors. Now bohemian fashion is characterized by a carefree bohemian lifestyle with flowing dresses, natural materials and earthy tones. It draws inspiration from the bohemian or the nomadic or the banjara lifestyle. In bohemian fashion you will see loose and flowing fabrics like cotton or linen or suede as well as bold prints, earthy colors and fringe detailing, accessories such as layered necklaces, wide brimmed hats and oversized sunglasses they're often worn to complete the bohemian look when it comes to indian wear you can experiment with draping if you are more inclined towards the bohemian aesthetic you can opt for a more relaxed drape that allows the saree to flow freely rather than being tightly wrapped around your body Now I do have to say I've seen this aesthetic a lot in India but when I was doing my masters in London I didn't see too many people dressing up this way part of the reason could be the weather since it's cold and raining for the most part of the year in the UK bohemian styles they might not be the easiest to carry over there which can be a good starting point to keep in mind your aesthetic is shaped of course by how you choose to identify yourself but also by your surroundings Most people who resonate with this aesthetic they not just in fashion but also generally appreciate simplicity. Minimal fashion aesthetic is characterized by understated elegance and clean lines. It's inspired by the idea of less is more where the focus is on quality over quantity and each piece is very carefully chosen for its versatility and for its very timeless appeal. You'll have monochromatic schemes and neutral colors like black, white, gray, beige and navy. Now classic and minimal might share some similarities like clean lines and simple silhouettes but minimal aesthetics often incorporate less ornamentation less color and lesser patterns than classic 
you'll often see almost no ruffles, lace or embroidery. The very Pinteresty Parisian style is a very good example of a mix of classic and minimal. It does incorporate a minimalistic approach with a focus on simplicity, emphasizing clean lines, neutral colors and simple silhouettes. But at the same time, it also draws on a lot of classic elements like high quality materials, attention to detail and an appreciation for tailored clothing, often incorporating a lot of luxurious accessories here and there like scarves and jewelry to add a touch of elegance to the outfit. Next we have Retro. This aesthetic is inspired by past decades, bold prints, bright colors and statement accessories. Sonam Kapoor is known for her retro inspired looks. It's often associated with a lot of nostalgia and a desire for the bygone era. This usually incorporates intricate detailing such as lace, embroidery and beading that adds a touch of elegance and femininity to the garments. If you lean more towards your grandmoms or your mom's closet from their younger days or even wish that that fashion comes back, you do have an appreciation for the past and enjoy items that have more character and history. If you're someone who does resonate with this aesthetic, thrift store or vintage shops are a great place to start curating your wardrobe. While both vintage and retro fashion take inspiration from the past eras, they do differ in their materials, in their construction and in their historical significance. Retro fashion is basically new clothing that is designed to look like it was made in the past, while vintage fashion is clothing that was actually made in the past and has been worn before. Vintage fashion often features unique and statement accessories like hats and gloves and handbags that are not commonly seen in modern fashion today. Think of Y2K fashion as an example of the retro aesthetic. Y2K refers to the period of time around the year 2000 when fashion trends were heavily influenced by pop culture and technology. Now in the early 2000s, the internet was becoming more popular and new technologies like phones and personal computers were changing the way that people lived and worked. So in Y2K fashion, technology was often represented through the use of futuristic materials and designs like metallic fabrics and holographic prints. Clothing and accessories were often designed to be functional and adaptable with features like multiple pockets and zippers and a adjustable straps that reflected the practicality of modern technology. Romantic. Okay, I'm gonna have to control myself with this one because this is the one that I resonate with the most so I can go on and on and on about this. But if you've learned anything till now, it is that a well-defined aesthetic can help you create a cohesive look and this cohesive look can translate into all areas of your life. So it isn't just limited to fashion. Now this can be particularly important for personal branding and helps others recognize and remember you and your style. If you are a romantic through and through, you are sentimental and you appreciate beauty and elegance. You prefer soft colors, floral prints and delicate fabrics. Romantic aesthetic is characterized by dreamy, soft and feminine styles with delicate lace and pastel colors. When it comes to accessories, pearls, delicate jewelry and embellished hairbands are often worn to complement the romantic look. Now in the romantic aesthetic, we also have cottage core, which is again gaining a lot of popularity online, especially on Pinterest. This is a fashion aesthetic that is characterized by a romanticized view of rural life. This is not a very commonly seen aesthetic in India, especially in the Bollywood fashion scene, but Alia Bhatt, for example, in Dear Zindagi, she wore flowing dresses with a lot of floral prints and she paired it with minimal makeup and natural hairstyles, which do give the cottage core vibe, especially when you add into the mix the kind of beach, rural kind of setting that they showed in the movie. Then we have streetwear or sporty, of course, streetwear fashion is inspired by urban culture and often includes sportwear influences, oversized clothing and bold graphics. Most airport looks also do fall under this category. Anushka Sharma, for example, often wears hoodies, loose oversized t-shirts, denim jackets, track pants, sneakers and caps. Sometimes people around us like our siblings, our partner, our friends, they influence us and our aesthetics too and in this case this might just be true. But now we come with the question, how do we find our aesthetic? We're already so overloaded with visual imagery all the time on Instagram, on Pinterest. So going out of your way to figure out your own aesthetic can seem overwhelming. So out of your entire lot, just try to see what you're naturally drawn towards the most. Images that you end up screenshotting or saving. So step number one is to start with inspiration. Take inspiration from different sources like social media, like magazines or movies or TV shows. We often ignore the importance of these visual media when we kind of stick just to social media. But magazines and TV shows, they do have an influence on our lives as well and on the way people around us dress. 
Keep in mind that you don't have to stick to a certain aesthetic and your choices might change over time. You will often find yourself mixing several aesthetics if you've never previously thought about this. Then identify your own personal style. Take a look at your current wardrobe and see what your style actually is. Ask yourself what kind of clothing makes you feel confident and reflects your personality. Do those pieces have more neutral colors? Are the silhouettes more straight line or are they flowy? Based on your inspiration and on your personal style that you've now thought about, define the aesthetic that you resonate with the most. Is it minimal? Is it bohemian? Is it vintage? Is it romantic or classic or something totally different? Now don't feel the pressure to stick to one as I said but at least try to see which aesthetic you do associate yourself with the most. Step number four is to experiment with different styles. Experiment with different colors and patterns and textures. Until you experiment, you won't know what's really out there for you. A lot of us, we stay in our shells and we feel like, oh, I'm just gonna wear what I have in my current wardrobe. And fair enough, if you don't wanna spend money buying something, at least go to the try room and try out these options. Once you start understanding what looks good on you, you'll become so confident that this will be like second nature for you. You wouldn't have to think too much about it. You will know what kind of pieces will look good on you. And as you enter the store, those will be the first pieces that you pick out. So start doing this actively and you'll see a difference for sure. Step number five is to refine your aesthetic. As you experiment with different styles, you might find that some aspects of your chosen aesthetic, they work better for you than others. So take note of what you like and what you don't like and then refine your aesthetic accordingly. Now that you have defined your fashion aesthetic, congratulations, now is the time to create a wardrobe that aligns with it. This means investing in a few high quality pieces that you can mix and match to create different outfits. Now when I host workshops, I often get this question, high quality pieces, of course they're good quality but I don't want to spend so much, can I just do with like something off of a thrift store or off like a local market? Of course you can. But if you compare the life that a high quality piece is going to have versus something that a thrift store is going to have, more often than not you'll realize that the high quality piece is going to serve you for a longer time. So every time you wear it, calculate the cost of how many times you wear it and you'll see that that is more economically viable as well. Because the cheaper alternative you might just dish out after like 4 or 5 washes because it will start losing colour, it will become loose, the fit won't be the same. And finally step number 7 is to stay true to yourself. You see ultimately your fashion aesthetic, it needs to reflect your personality and it needs to make you feel confident and comfortable. So don't be afraid to mix and match different styles to create a look that is uniquely yours. Make sure it is true to yourself, it's functional and practical. For example, you wouldn't wear something very sporty to office, right? And of course, as fashion continues to evolve, there are new aesthetics that are continuously emerging and they're gaining popularity. What I told you today were the most common aesthetics that you may resonate with. Of course, the list is never ending. There's punk, there's avant-garde, there's industrial, there's so much more that we can talk about. And if you would like a video on that, to leave a comment down below and remember that ultimately fashion is a form of self-expression so have fun along the way don't take all of this too seriously mix and match do your own thing and enjoy the process and discover your own unique fashion aesthetic i hope you guys enjoyed this video make sure you do subscribe to the channel and i will be seeing you guys next time Bye bye